1400 years they had failed dr sharosh has managed it and we are looking forward with eagerness to his production <laughs> copy copy i am asking what is there to copy what have you got that is worth copying there are according to one of the mightiest evangelists tele evangelist in america he says he writes a book on incest you know incest i won't be labor you incest you see when you go with somebody else's wife or daughter have sex out of marriage it is adultery or fornication but when you go and sleep with your own mother your own daughter your own sister your own daughter in law that is incest there are 10 cases of incest in this book of god 10 that types and types of incest that you can commit a textbook if you want to know what what types and as a result in my country the whites of south africa most of them are christians 8% of all whites in south africa they commit incest with their own daughters and 13% of the americans are committing incest with their own daughters Our brother, I didn't, I didn't catch his name, but he's a psychiatrist. He will be able to confirm. Dr. Vernon Jones, a psychologist of great repute, he carried out experiments on groups of school children to whom certain stories were being read, and he said that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in character. The type of story that you read will create the type of mentality that you have. If you read junky stuff, your mind will become junky. You eat junky food, you will be, your body will become junky. amazing out of the 10 cases of incest mohammed din copy a single one <laughs> then you read rape not only rape how to rape your own sister if you want to it's given to you in detail if you want to rape your own sister one of the sons of david he set you an example what what you must do if you want to rape your own sister gang rape is there A son goes and prohibits the 10 of his father's wives 10 in a row i'm telling this is in the holy book a christian lady here in the uk here in the uk she wrote a letter she says banned in the book banned in the bible what it has banned it but of course your salvation in dr sharosh's book uh um, Jesus prophecy and the Middle East on page 35 he gives us a list of things that is quoting listen america by Jerry Falwell and he gives us a list of the crime rate the way it has increased in america this is from his book the type of things that you read this is what you read and the result book of judges the book of the bible chapter 16 verse 1 i'm reading diligent listeners pay attention then samson went to gaza you know gaza where these palestinian children you know are fighting for the freedom you call them terrorists those little children are being mowed down 200 and some 50 have already died <laughs> palestinian children So Samson goes to Gaza, the same Gaza, and he saw a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, and he went in unto her. Full stop. Come on, come on, tell me now. What does it teach you? Samson goes to Gaza, and he sees a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, and he goes in unto her. Full stop. Nothing more. There's not a single redeeming word or phrase. that this guy for what he did or oh, maybe this was a palestinian whore or prostitute so it means nothing so as a palestinian maybe if she was an israeli whore it might have meant something she was not an israeli <laughs> so god didn't give him aids he didn't give him vd didn't give him gonorrhea nothing nothing this great hero he went to gaza and he went in to her the more 
modern Bible, they say he sw spent a night with her. What, doing what? Hallelujahs. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What were they doing? Spending the night with a prostitute whole night. What do you do? Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, what is the moral? You see Ian Fleming, Ian Fleming, he wrote this, 007, James Bond. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm told that, you know, wherever he goes, he sees the beautiful woman, he goes into bed with her. Wherever he goes, he's like eating peanuts. Wherever he sees a woman, I'm asking Ian Fleming, ask him, where did he get the idea from? Here, here, the book is telling you. This guy goes to Gaza, he sees the prostitute, wholesale. It portrays God Almighty as a barber. You know, barber, people cutting hairs. It says here, book of Isaiah, book of Isaiah said, the prince of the prophets. You say the fifth gospel, Isaiah, book of Isaiah, the fifth gospel. In the same day, the Lord will shave with a hired razor. The Lord means God will shave with a hired razor. <laughs> Allah. Hired razor, this one here, sir. They didn't have safety razors then. Hired razor, the cutthroat, we call them cutthroats. With those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the legs. He will shave your head and the hair of your legs. It doesn't say how high. <laughs> you tell that to a barber today, you know, to shave. <laughs> He said, don't you know about Imac or Veet or what, what, what does it do? That? You know, in England, man, you see this Edwards every day. Huh? God Almighty, he, he takes this and he's going to shave people's legs, hair on the legs. What are you trying to do to God, Yahi? Here, 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 some more absurd, absurd nonsense about God. It says here, I'm reading from 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 9 to 11. It says, smoke went out from his nostrils, Allah's nostrils. You know, people learn to smoke and take out smoke from the nose. Where do you get the idea from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke came out from his nostrils. You see, you smoke. and devouring fire from his mouth like a dragon. Flamethrowers, you know flamethrowers, they got the idea of flamethrowers, where they got it from, yeah? And devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. Verse 11, he rode upon a chirub. He rode Allah Baritala, he's riding on a chirub. And flew, God Almighty is flying on a chirub. You know what's a chirub? Do you know what is a chirub? No, no. You see, I went to St. Peter's in Rome. St. Peter's brother has also been there, I'm sure. He has been speaking about St. Peter's in his book, so he must have gone to St. Peter's in Rome. It's a huge, huge church. St. Peter's in Rome at the Vatican. Inside the Vatican, inside, you see, I don't know, the youngsters that were with me, you see, they made me to stand against a wall and they took some shots. And the shot was of this Chirubim. Chirubim is a plural of Chirub. Chirubim meaning young crisp angels. See, angels are beautiful women with wings. In Western artistry, designs, drawings, you find beautiful women, well proportioned. This is 36, 24, 36. <laughs> with wings are, you know, mature angels. A cherub is a young thing. You find this in the Collins Dictionary, they give you a definition. A childlike angel. Childish angel. Cherubim. So the picture is here. I know for all of you, you to see, I think once it is on video, you'll be able to see that close quarters in marble. This was in flesh-colored marble. You can pass this on, like, you know, can you have, oh, you have seen it? You see, this is absolutely naked girl 